Hey, going to do a video exposing this vigilant Christian heretic. He's a total heretic. And I'm doing this thing of him basically attacking the biblical doctrine of the imminent rapture and attacking the pre-tribulational rapture because he's a post-tripper. He, he doesn't believe in the uh, pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. He believes that we're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Of course, he will be going into that time period because he's not, he's not safe, but a whole other issue. But he thinks that Christians are going into this time period. And also, it's worth noting, he, he believes in replacement theology, too. I have a video saved he made. Uh, it was like years back where he was promoting the uh, An Stephen Anderson's propaganda film, Marching to Zion. And he said in the video that replacement theology is good biblical doctrine. So it makes sense that he's a post-tribber because replacement theology and post-trib rapture is going to go hand in hand. Because the time of Jacob's trouble is for the Jewish people. Read Matthew 24, read Mark 13, read Luke 17. It's clearly for the Jewish people. Jesus was speaking to the Jews in those passages. I proved that in other videos. One of them was debunking this little, this little novice, this kid, Ben the Baptist, uh, showing how the uh, Jesus, he was speaking to the Jews. And, but of course, he thinks that we've replaced the Jews. So obviously, as a result, he's going to think that we're going, because again, this time period is for the Jews. So if he thinks that we've replaced the Jews, then obviously if we're going to go into this time period, because we've, we've replaced the Jews, you know? Again, sat satanic heresy, but here, here he, uh, um, he goes to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and he's such an idiot. He doesn't realize that he that by reading, because he reads from verse 1 to verse, I think it's verse 9, and he doesn't realize that he actually just proved the pre-tribulational rapture and proved the rapture is Im imminent. And he doesn't even realize it. So, I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to show you how the how 2 Thessalonians proves, without, without a doubt, by comparing Scripture with Scripture. We don't just base doctrine off one verse. We compare Scripture with Scripture. I'm going to show you that 2 Thessalonians, comparing it with verses in Revelation, proves a pre-time Jacob of trouble catching away, falsely called the rapture. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be using the phrase rapture just so people know what I'm talking about. But uh, by comparing a scripture with scripture, I'm going to show you that that he actually disproves a pre-tribulational rapture. So let's get right into this. But the one thing I do not believe in and I wanted to talk about today is the doctrine of rapture imminence. That the rapture could happen at any single moment. Although that may seem true, it is not 100% biblical. What do I mean by that? The Bible clearly says, and we're going to look here at 2 Thessalonians, there are some prophetic markers that must occur, that have not occurred yet, that we need to witness before we can even anticipate this second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, no man knows the day or the hour in which Jesus is coming back, but we can know the season. Okay? So we don't know the exact day, but we can get a general idea by looking at prophetic markers in the Bible. So now if you want to follow me, let's go to 2 Thessalonians, and we're going to go in chapter 2. Now here you see Paul, and Paul is writing to the church in uh, Thessalonia, and he's telling those who are there about this. Because even here, uh, 2,000 plus years ago, uh, approximately, you have the church falling for this, that Jesus is going to come back here. This is what they thought, okay? So let's check this out. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and of, and of our being gathered together to him. That's the Bible. Being gathered together to... So it's worth noting that in this video, he's not even, not even quoting from the King James. He's quoting from a, a modern version, mo modern perverted uh, Bible version. He doesn't even use the King James. And I, I actually have a video. I'm going to be bringing this out in a future video. He actually calls King James onlyism. He calls it a cult. And he says that, that we're cultic, we're legalistic, and we're hate-filled. I'm going to show the proof of that in a future video because I have the clip of him saying that. But, yeah, in his videos, he quotes all these new versions. He quotes all these, you know, perverted versions of the Bible. You know, uh, makes sense. Because the modern versions, you get all kinds of heresies out of the modern versions. So, just wanted to point that out. To, to see him, okay, when he comes back. So, concerning the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the rapture. This is what the Lord, uh, this is what the Apostle Paul is saying. The word rapture is not even in the Bible. The, the proper term is the resurrection or like you're the catching up the body of Christ. It's called up before the time of Jacob's trouble. The word rapture is not even in the Bible. 
But again, I'm going to be using the word rapture just so people know what I'm saying. But I, I want to make it clear that word, the word rapture is not in the Bible. The proper term is the resurrection or the catching up of the body of Christ. We're called up bef before the time of Jacob's trouble, not after. And so he has to address it even here. Do not be so quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, okay? Don't freak out, he was telling them back there. Don't, don't think he's, he's just going to come back at any moment, okay? Other by a spirit... See how, or, see how he's mocking the thing? He's going to come back at any moment, you know? Um, the Holy Spirit is not, is not um, leading this kid to say these, these things about biblical doctrine. Just like his video where he denies that hell is eternal. I mean, the Spirit of God is not leading him and guiding him to say these these uh, wicked things. So it's got a different spirit, I would say. A spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. So now in that time, there were people that were prophesying and saying that Jesus had already returned, that the church had missed the rapture. And he's going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Relax, okay? Do not be alarmed. Do not be so easily shaken in mind. Don't listen to those, whether they come to you by a spirit, by some prophet, that tell you that Jesus Christ has already come back. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will come, uh, that day, okay, will not come until, okay? You see that? So he's saying, hey, listen. I know you think Jesus has already come back and that he can come back at any moment, but Jesus will not come back until, okay? So that, see, that sentence right there is to line up certain markers that we need to be able to identify before we start to see and identify that we truly are in the final generation before the Lord's second coming, okay? Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come. That day will not come until the rebellion comes first. Okay. I mean, again, not not you know quoting this new version, but the King James. Let me show what the King James says. You know, again, quoting all these modern Vatican versions, which makes sense again why he makes he believes in a satanic post-trib rapture. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse one to three. Read it from the King James, the Word of God. Now we beseech you, brethren, that by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. That ye be not or be not so, soon, not good at reading on a computer. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit or by nor by word nor by letter, as from us that as that the day of Christ is at hand. That no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away. Not called the rebellion, it's called the falling away. First, and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Just wanted to make sure we get the King James, not his modern versions. Okay, the great falling away. Now, I do believe that we are witnessing that. We are in the beginning stage. We're in the beginning stages? You're kidding me, right? I mean, the modern quote-unquote professing Christians, they have so many heresies. I mean, they're, they're so compromised. I mean, we're beginning to be in the falling away? I don't think so. We're, we're like way into that. You know, ridiculous. What a novice. Ages, but brothers and sisters, it's going to get much, 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 much worse. The Bible says that when Jesus comes back, one of the things that he says is, in, uh, that he says about the world that he's coming back to is, will I find any faith in the world? God's going to let this thing get really, really bad. He's, if you think it's bad now and he's coming tomorrow, you... God's going to let this thing get really, really bad. Um, chapter and verse, please. Um, God is not letting it happen. Well, obviously God is, is, I guess, he's controlling it, but God is not letting it happen as in he's, in a way, he's trying to imply it. Basically, there are people that still have to get saved, but once that last person gets saved, we're going up. But, you know, God's not letting it happen, just, just you know, a little while longer, a little while longer. No, it's not what the Bible says. You know, he, he's, making this, he's making this stuff up that's not in the Bible anywhere. You have no idea how much grace and mercy the Lord has to allow evil to continue so that he can keep on saving. He comes uh, because the only reason why he's allowing it to continue is because the body of Christ is still on earth. Okay? He, I mean, he's not allowing it to continue just because he's, he's having grace. He's doing it because the body of Christ is still on earth. Once the body of Christ is gone, he's pouring out his wrath on this earth. That's the time of Jacob's trouble, falsely called the Great Tribulation. Because 
if you read Genesis chapter 18, God does not punish the righteous but the wicked. I mean, Genesis 18 is actually a really good chapter proving, or is it, no, I mean, not Genesis 18, uh, where is it? Sorry, I don't have my notes on me, but I, I believe it's Genesis 18, where uh, God, you know, Abraham says, you know, God, he won't punish the righteous with the wicked. Don't have it off the top of my head, but uh, actually, let me, let me just look real quick. I, I want to make sure I get this right. Because I don't have any notes on me for this. This is kind of just... I'm not sure I get this right. Uh, Genesis chapter 18. Uh, I'm going to look down for a little bit, see if I can find it. Uh, Abraham intercedes for Sodom. Here it is. Genesis 18, verse 22 to 23. And the men turned their faces from thence, this is Abraham interceding for Sodom, and the men turned their faces uh, from thence, and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham drew near, and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? You know, he won't destroy the righteous with the wicked. And if you go down there, he, uh, where is it? Or wasn't that verse, but yeah, oh yeah that was the verse I was looking for, sorry. Yeah. He says he won't destroy the righteous with the wicked. A, a good, just God will not just will not punish the righteous with the wicked. That's why we're being taken out before this time period, because he's not going to judge righteous Christians with the wicked, lost world. It, it can't happen. And if it is happening, it's not God doing it, because it's not the God of the Bible. It's a false god. So just want, want, to make sure, want to make sure I get the verse right. But yeah. let's continue. Comes back tomorrow, certain people can't get saved. So if he prolongs this time of rebellion as long as he can by his grace and mercy, okay, and he can continue to bring people to salvation, okay? So let no man deceive you. The rebellion must happen first, the great falling away, so be attentive to that. And also that the man of lawlessness is revealed. It's called the man of sin, not the man of lawlessness. Get a real Bible, not, not your modern perverted Bibles. The Antichrist will be revealed, okay? The son of destruction who opposes and exalts, exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Now, I don't know if you uh, are subscribed to RSC. Brother David, love you, man. I don't know if you're watching. Oh, yeah, Ryan Saturn's eye. He's another occultist. Uh, don't watch him. I, I, I've seen him. He, he, he has some, some decent stuff, but yeah, he, he's another uh, unsaved heretic like this guy. So don't don't watch him. This, but uh, he was actually in Israel, and he's took. You can go to his channel RSE, and you're gonna see that he's in Israel, and he's videotaping. They have plans for the temple. They're building it. We are living in some very prophetic times, but these are the beginnings, okay? So let us be attentive here so that we're not shaken in mind. Okay, so the, the great falling away must happen. The Antichrist in the temple in Israel, it, and he will present himself to be God, okay? That has not happened yet. Do you not remember that when I uh, was still with you, I told you these things, and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who uh, now restrains, it will do so until he is out of the way, okay? And the lawless one will be revealed who the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. Okay. So what we recognize here in Bible prophecy, according to 2 Thessalonians, is that the church oftentimes gets too wound up okay, about Jesus' second coming. And it causes us to be shaken, to be alarmed. Um, and we're not being discerning of the actual times that we find ourselves in. Okay, So as much as I would love Jesus to come back in 2019, I can't say that and these these blood moon things, guys. Yeah, he he goes into this this little rant he does. But let me show you how this Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two proves a pre time Jacob of trouble catching away, falsely called the tribulation. But let me show you. So I read verses three, and let me read you verse four to nine, talking about the Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, 
or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in, a, sitteth in a temple as God, showing himself to be God. Remember, remember ye not that when I was with you, or when when I was yet with you, again, not the best at reading on a computer, I told you these things. And look at look at verse six to nine. Here, you want some scriptures proven the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away? Check this out. And now you know that with that withhold us. What? No, sorry, not that. Again, not, not the best at reading. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Hmm. So there's something withholding the Antichrist from showing up. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all powers and signs and lying wonders. So what is it? Well, I'll get back to that, but... He did just talking about the Antichrist basically like, you know, basically working with Satan essentially, but look at this. Um, and then or says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. So until he be taken out of the way. What's going on here? Well, there's something stopping the Antichrist from showing up. There's someone hindering it from showing up. You know, what, what withholdeth that he may be revealed in his last time? There's something withholding the Antichrist from showing up. Who is it? Well, it's the body of Christ. We're still on this earth. As long as we're here, the Antichrist cannot show up. So, and, and, and you say, I'll prove it. Okay, I'll prove it to you. Compare this with Revelation chapter 5. And, 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 trust me, I'm getting somewhere. Uh, this is why I compare scripture with scripture. They say, give me one verse that proves the post-trib rapture. I can't give you one verse, but I can prove it to you by comparing scripture with scripture. And it's worth noting that every cult in human history always bases doctrine off one verse. You don't base doctrine off one verse. You compare scripture with scripture. That's what cults act. They base doctrine off one verse. Which is Matthew twenty four twenty nine after immediately after the tribulation shall you know all that stuff uh, again whole other video in and of itself uh, where is it here it is Revelation chapter five verse nine keep in mind with Second Thessalonians chapter two there is something withholding the Antichrist from showing up you know until he be taken out of the way it's the body of Christ here's here's the proof for that. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us unto God, redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Hmm. Who is it talking about here? It's talking about who, well, who's uh, properly saying who's, who's saying this stuff. It's the body of Christ. Ye have blood redeemed saints. It says, Who redeemed us to God by, by thy blood. It's talking about blood redeemed saints who are in heaven. And know what happens? They're in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. And I saw it, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, and was given to, unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So wait a second. You have blood-redeemed saints. Or I'll start over. You have 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which says there's something that's stopping the Antichrist from showing up. That we're, we're hindering the Antichrist from showing up. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 says it proves it shows blood redeemed saints who are in heaven cheering Jesus on as he's opening the seals and then the seals are open after Revelation chapter 5 and then the Antichrist shows up the rider, the rider on the white horse what is this the, the blood redeemed saints are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed or taken out of the earth before the time of Jacob's trouble I mean that, that, that right there alone proves the pre-tribulational pre -tribulation, pre -tribulation rapture I mean yeah Pre-tribulation rapture. I mean that alone, because you have Second Thessalonians chapter two, something stopping the Antichrist from showing up. Revelation chapter five verse nine, the blood redeemed saints are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation six two. The pre time of Jacob, Jacob's trouble catching away. So this this clown, vigilant Christ, Christian, quote unquote Christian, doesn't realize that he just proved the pre time of Jacob's trouble catching away. So don't be deceived by this heretic. Um, it, it's it's he's he's so many heresies, but. God bless you. Goodbye.